Hello and welcome to the Swatch Beach Volleyball Major Series live from Gestad in Switzerland. We're just bringing you the final play in the men's round of 16, Netherlands versus Poland. Uh, one set each at this point in the competition. So into the third set, only up to a score of 15 with uh, Poland 6-5 up against uh, the Dutch. Nick Fellows and of course the former Olympic beach volleyball champion Dane Blanton in the commentary box. We've seen both of these teams play exceptionally well on the uh, major series for 2015 of course the Dutch pairing and the orange shirts of Alexander Brouwer wearing one there and Robert Moosen wearing uh, two won the first Swatch Beach volleyball major of the season in uh, Poric Croatia and as for this talented young Polish side of uh, Fijelek wearing shirt two, white shirt, that is, of course, and Prudel wearing shirt number one, the taller of the two Polish players. They took a very exciting bronze medal in Stavanger just a couple of weeks ago. Dane very closely matched in the opening two sets for these two teams, and it looks like it will go right to the wire as we get closer and closer to the Magic 15 score in the third set. Well, no question about it. These two teams have been battling this round of 16, so important to advance to the quarterfinals, and all four of these players know it. Remember that it was Fialik and Prudel who won their first and only FIVB event a year ago in The Hague. Unfortunately, last week in The Hague for the World Championships, both these teams finished a disappointing 17th, so they're trying to rebound from that. Look at Brower coming out of the middle of the court. A huge hit, giving the momentum to the Dutch as they take the side switch. Yeah, 15 points are on the board. We side switch with a point score of five rather than seven because we're only heading to a score of 15. But like the first two sets, you need to win by two clear points. Here's Robert Moosen. Tallest player on the court at six feet nine or two meters, seven centimeters. Poland on the attack. The Dutch have read that one nicely. Great block there from Prudel. He's been blocking with real style and finesse throughout this round of 16 match. Top blocker on court in this match so far. Anytime I see Prudel blocking, he is impressive because he's so technically strong. He's only listed at six foot three inches. That's 191 centimeters, but he gets up, he gets over the net. Lovely serve. Great spin on the ball, but the Dutch attack back, and that's a lovely spike again. This time from Alexandra Brewer. And uh, Brewer there spotting the little gap right down the center, placing the ball perfectly. Yeah, Brewer's really playing well. We saw before that side switch, he blasted it down the middle, and then he goes there yet again. That seems to be the sweet spot right now for Brouwer. Now, Brouwer, just 25 years of age from The Hague. The Dutch just a little disappointed to finish 17th in their home World Championships last week. And that's an easy side out for the Polish duo to level the scores at nine each. It's interesting, this Dutch duo of Brouwer and Musen, a bit up and down. They just have not been able to find that consistency. They really shocked the world winning that World Championship in 2013. And then winning, like you said, in Croatia earlier this year. But then they kind of disappeared with a ninth and 17th after trying to really redeem themselves here in Stad. Well, this time it's Robert Musen that spikes the ball almost onto the head of uh, Marius Prudel of Poland. Watch carefully here on the replay. He's got the hands there, but doesn't quite have the timing right to stop the ball. And uh, the Dutch team are 10-9 clear. It is Moosen with service. Fijelek. Oh, unlucky there. What a great dig from Brouwer. Can he finish it? Oh, no, the rare, the linesman has the flag up. It means that Poland level the score at 10 all at one set all. Well, you know what? Brower went for it once again, trying to hit that ball in that deep middle position. That time, just going long. So, Poland really being aware to let that ball go out of bounds. And I'll tell you what, Nick, this one's going to come down to the wire, just like so many of these three setters do, because there's so much parity on the men's side. So deep, any team can win on any given weekend. 
and we've seen that in the past, so I expect this one to possibly go into overtime. I have to say, Dan, I was with the Dutch at the start of this match. They've already knocked out the number one seats, their fellow countrymen, and Numedorden Varenborst in the previous round. So, uh, high expectations for the uh, Dutch seeds here. Of course, they're only seeded seven. A little bit of a finger injury there for Marus Prudel, and just getting that thumb really stretched quite nastily. Here's a replay. Big hit right there, and you can see Prudel cringing right away. Tried to press over the net. He probably got his pinky jammed. No, it looks like a thumb injury right there. He's holding the thumb. It's happened many a times to myself. It's not good. It stings for a little while, but it won't hamper him. He'll be out there. It does possibly affect his setting because he loves to set the ball overhand with his hands, and having that thumb injured, it could have it, it could really make him have to set the ball underhand with a bump set style rather than overhand. Let's not forget that we've seen a, <laughs> a certain American lady dislocate her shoulder on court, have it popped back into place and go out there and win her quarterfinal. Referring to, of course, her Kerry Walsh Jennings, who has been the story of this uh, Swatch Beach Volleyball uh, major here in uh, Gestad. So I'm sure with a few problems on the thumb, Let's hope it doesn't stop the momentum or just take away the focus. I'm sure he's going to play on. I'm sure he's not that concerned about a little bit of pain or the injury, but it's just the momentum that the Polish team had gathered, giving this uh, this Dutch these Dutch favourites a real run for their money here in this third set. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That can be a big issue when you have a break like this, you have something all of a sudden start ailing you. It's important that you keep the focus throughout because if not, I mean, this thing could be over very quickly. So he's called a medical timeout. And now that the doctor's out there, he'll have five minutes. Take a look at it. He presses forward. Oh, it was the hand on hand. It wasn't the ball. It was the follow through by Musin that just jammed his thumb. You know, there's no foul committed there. That's just part of the game. That can happen during play. And I guarantee you that joints in all sorts of pain, all sorts of trouble. Uh, I've had it happen to myself here and there, and it hurts. But uh, he'll probably tape it up, I would imagine. Here's a follow through by Muse right on the thumb, jams the thumb. Prudell comes down in writhing in pain immediately. So we're about a minute and a half into the medical timeout. They have five minutes. And at the end of the five minutes, he has to make a decision, will he continue or not? And like we both said, we believe he will continue. It, it just depends on what kind of shape he's in and how much pain he's going to endure. Put a little tape on that, you'll be good to go. Well, like you say, uh, Dane, if we can uh, see a shoulder dislocated on court in the quarterfinals yesterday and i cringed when the doctor came on court and just popped that shoulder bone back into place and then we thought it was all over it was uh, time to go for gary and she came back out and played for the five six points so i'm sure uh, a nasty whack to the thumb will not deter maru's uh, prudel you can see their great shot of uh, Fijalek, his teammate, saying, come on, let's get this going. Let's stay pumped up here. We've got the Dutch within our sights. And the Dutch are out on court, keeping warm, doing a few warm-up shots. This is a testing time for the FIVB referee delegate. That's uh, Jeff uh, Brio, who is uh, making sure that they stick within the rules and regulations, particularly as a medical timeout as has been uh, called. Uh, Jeff's been busy with this situation 24 hours ago, of course, with... Uh, Kerry Welsh Jennings and, uh, and now with the Dutch pairing. It's delaying proceedings just a little here in uh, Gestad, but please stay with us because uh, we'll be looking at another men's match instead of the women's bronze medal match. That's had to be forfeited due to uh, Kerry not being able to, the American team not being able to contest their semi final. And then after that men's match, which promises to be a cracker, America versus Canada, by the way, uh, we will then have the women's final this afternoon. And that women's final is scheduled, the gold medal match, of course, $57,000 on the table, is scheduled to start at 4 p.m. Central European time.
There you see the tape being applied to Marouge Prudel's right hand. It's the thumb that he has injured, and they are going to try to support that thumb as much as possible. But from experience, I know there's not a lot you can do. You try to support it. If it gets hit again, it hurts extremely badly, and that's just the way it is. He's going to get a nice tape job and then come out and hopefully they'll be able to pick up where they left off because they were playing very high level and they were right in position to get the win and to move on. Well, uh, Fijalek, Prudel's partner, is already out on court as well. There's Jeff uh, Brio, the FIVB referee delegate, making sure that the rules are not contravened here and making sure that we are within the rule book with regards to the timing of this uh, medical timeout and uh, just urging things along uh, just a little bit. We've got a busy schedule here on Centre Court this afternoon and we've had uh, quite a few uh, changes due to that uh, injury and then forfeit of the first semi, second semi-final in the women's uh, competition. Dane, you've been in this situation so many times yourself, but uh, not too much of a concern for Brudel there. It's probably happened on numerous occasions before, but what he's got to do, he's got to get his race face back on, the game right into it, because we're in the third set, and it's incredibly tight between these teams, two teams at this point in the competition. Yeah, I don't know if he's ever injured that thumb before or not. That's just information that, that we don't have, but it is painful. He will continue, but it's going to bother him a little bit. And like I said, the biggest thing is if he's setting the ball overhand, he might want to switch that technique and set it underhand, a bump set to take the fingers out of play. Because remember, when you set the ball overhand, it's got to come out nice and clean, and you don't want to be called for a double contact. And not being able to feel that thumb makes it very difficult when you use that setting motion. So you see him out on the court, he's ready to go. Not even going to warm up at all. I thought they'd hit the ball back and forth at least for a second, but Poland ready to go right out of the gate. So first set went to the Dutch at 23-21. The second set went to the Polish team at 21-14. And Poland lead 11-10. But now with a strapped up thumb on his right hand, here is Maruz Prudel with service. Goes for the overhand, but a very gentle float serve. Holland on the attack. Oh, great shot there. And it's come from the Dutch number one, Alexander Brewer. 25-year-old out of the Hague. They've already knocked out the number one seat, and the Dutch spotting the opportunity here to raise their game whilst the Poles are clearly a little flustered. This will be interesting who they decide to serve here. Prudel. And they go to Prudel. I don't know if that's the right call. I would like to see them make Prudel set the ball, so go to his partner, Fialek, and see how that works out. Because hitting the ball, you know, you just take the pain, you swing at it, it's gonna hurt a little bit. The question is, can he set his partner well? Well, he can certainly spike the ball well, because that was a crackerjack shot from uh, Prudel to maintain the Polish lead. Here's his teammate, Fijalek, with service. Way too long. All square at 12. It's the first team to 15, but you must be two points clear to take this third set. And of course, for these two teams, the winner progresses to the quarterfinals, the other heads home. Mousson with service. You called it, there's the set from Prudel, not the best. But they get themselves out of trouble once again, side out for Poland. So you can see, Prudel will be setting the ball underhand, the bump set technique. And they get out of trouble right there. It's just a matter of can they close the door here? They're just two points short of bringing home a victory. Continues to serve with a taped up thumb. Oh, just a little too long. Credit where it's due. That was a brave serve from uh, the Polish number one, Maruz Prudel. But the scores are all tied at 13 all. Very important side out for Poland needed here. And an important serve for the Dutch. 
Oh, it's a cracker serve. And, and as you called it, Dave, Brudel struggles to hold on to that serve, finding it very difficult to contain or control the ball. Now, all of a sudden, they face match point against them when they were in the driver's seat. So right now, can they bounce back the Poland? Here come the winners of the Porec Major. Looking forward, or trying to, progress to the quarters here. Another big serve, and it's out. Ooh. Lifeline for Poland. A lot of missed serves going on here in this tail end of this set. We saw Fialek miss, Prudel miss, and now the Netherlands, they hit the ball out as well. So trying to maybe get a little too risky and trying to get that ace. Here's Fialek with service for Poland. Scores are all square. That's a better service. It's the advantage for the Dutch there. Great shot from Alexandra Brewer. Wow, it looked like that ball was blocked on the Dutch side, but it's Prudel who doesn't press over. There's a slight gap between him and the net when he blocks, and so it ends up on the Polish side of the net. Match point once again for Holland. Here's the set for Fischelek to finish. Oh, what a great save. Jeez. Oh, well, keeping everything up here, Moussa looks to finish it. Oh, and another lifeline for Poland. 15 all. Well, that could be costly for the Dutch. They not only had one, but two swings for the match. One gets dug up and kept in play by Fialek. The other one ends up in the bottom of the net. So the Netherlands having a huge opportunity to seal the deal, and they cannot get it done. So now, can Poland turn the tables? Timeout. 15 all. You must win by two clear points. Oh, either team could take this, no question of a doubt. Brewer and uh, Moussen, the tape thumb there of uh, Maruz Prudel. More than its fair share of drama as we're in the closing stages of the third and final set here. Fielek made such an incredible defensive play to keep that alive. I mean, that ball was blasted at him so hard he couldn't control it on his side of the net. It goes over the net to the Netherlands. They get that second opportunity and cannot execute. So if I were talking momentum right now, it has swung to the Poland side. And the question is, can they take advantage of this right now with the confidence they gained on that last rally? Well, we joined this match towards the end due to the overrun. <laughs> it could go a fair way yet. 15 all. You need to win by two clear points. One set to the Netherlands, one set to Poland. Prudel puts the ball into play. Here's Holland on the attack. Oh, great work at the net from uh, Prudel. Oh, and he's there again. The advantage now swings to Poland. Match point. Wow, that was incredible. The fact that he is putting up that wall of a block, only 6-3, Pudel getting up and over. <laughs> oh, the battles of the injured here in Gestad has been quite amazing. Can Poland pull this off? Oh, level scores at 16 all. Fialek was there, just could not control it because that ball hit way too hard by Alexander Brower. Look at him get up and just challenge the defense going right at Fiala. So this is way too long from Brown. I really like it though, he's going for it right there. He's trying to just rip a jump serve because he knows how important it is to get that advantage back. Here's Gregor Fuzilek, the 28-year-old from Lodz, with service for Poland, a float serve. Here's the set and the attack from Holland. Oh, not quite with a lap now. And again, a quick turn around. 17 all. They're all level. Robert Moosen with service. Prudel now on the attack for Poland. Great reactions from both teams. Oh, well spotted. 
Drop ball works perfectly. Poland take the lead of 1817 and once again will serve for the match. Cordell, an incredible cover of his own hit that gets blocked at the net, and then he's able to execute on the second opportunity. So covering that ball so important instead of getting the stuff blocked to the Dutch. Alexander Brower is putting some amazing speed and power on those attacking spike shots. Oh, I love the way he plays, aggressive. He's absolutely bringing it every single opportunity he gets. Let's see if he tries to rip the jump serve. Fijalek on the attack for Poland. Oh, it's too long. And it is now back with the Dutch. Match ball. Wow, errors can be costly. The Netherlands now taking that lead. And you thought all the momentum was on the Polish side of the net, but right now, the Netherlands, yet another opportunity. Brower serves. Fijalek, Prudel, Fijalek looks to square the scores. Oh, great save from Brower. It's in. Here's another set from Prudel, Fijalek. Keeps the ball up, Prudel takes it on the second hit, cross court, level scores, 19 all. Incredible coverage by the Polish duo. Every time they hit the ball and it gets blocked, they cover themselves. Look at that, keeping it alive, and then it is Prudel who decides to go over on two, catching the Dutch off guard. And the tape thumb, the taped thumb, I should say, giving the ball a little extra topspin there. Beautiful play from Poland. Fijalek with service. Perfect set. Oh, and this time off the fingertips of uh, Prudel. Another great shot from Alexander Brauer. Brauer getting a lot of action. The Polish duo going to him exclusively, really keeping Musin very quiet on that right side. Match point again for the Dutch here. This time Robert Musin with service. And the Dutch are back in the match. The Poles are back in the match even. Wow. 20 points all. Another great save from the Polish duo. That set about seven feet off the net. You'd think the Netherlands had the advantage, but look at that deception by Fialek. Looking like he's gonna go cross court. The last minute he goes down the line, catches the Dutch off guard. Point for Poland. Prudent service for Poland. Here's the set for Brower. Ooh, unlucky there again. Holland take the point and match point once again. The Dutch are playing aggressive, you know. Anytime they get an opportunity, they're swinging at the ball hard. They're forcing Poland to make a block or a defensive play. There's that big power serve. This time he's got the length right. Prudel with a tip ball, it's too long! Prudel makes the error, Holland go through to the quarterfinals. A great performance from all four players on court, but Alexandra Brewer and a Robert Moussen in a three-setter. Going right to the wire in the third set, get the better of Gregors, Fischelek and Marus Prudel of Poland, who go out of the competition. Kudel and Fialek tried to hang on as long as they could. Here is the cut shot. It had to be perfect because the defense was set up in that angle, and Prudel tried to make it too sharp. It ends up out of bounds. A hard-fought battle. 